Hello, my name is Sarah Francis, and I'm a performance improvement specialist at Cedar sinai Medical Center. I will be kicking off this series of lessons with a brief introduction to performance improvement, followed by a basic overview of how to draw a process map. Listed here is the agenda for the entire lesson. After watching this presentation, there will be a quick video on a postpartum hemorrhage scenario followed by a swim lane mapping activity for you to get some hands-on experience with process mapping. Performance improvement refers to a set of tools and strategies that healthcare organizations routinely utilize to improve the quality and efficiency of healthcare delivery and reduce organizational costs. For example, an organization may set out to reduce patient wait time in their emergency department. They would start out by understanding why patients are waiting so long by conducting direct observations, interviewing stakeholders, mapping out the workflows, and analyzing process data. Then they would test out ideas to improve patient wait time and collect and analyze that data to determine the effectiveness of the changes. The approach uses a modified version of the scientific method that is flexible and iterative in nature. It focuses on the processes and systems and relies on objective measures rather than subjective opinions. Dr. Edwards Deming is considered the father of quality improvement. Deming was a professor at New York University and was interested in using statistics as a tool to achieve better quality control. His basic process involved quantifying errors analyzing why they happened, implementing changes, documenting results, and refining the process to further improve the quality. He believed that the vast majority of inefficiencies and waste stemmed from deficiencies in the systems and processes rather than the employees. He achieved success in enabling employees to do their jobs better by working with frontline staff to redesign tasks workplaces, and technology to better accomplish objectives. Deming, along with the physicist Walter Schewart, created the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle, which provides a basic structure for carrying out a performance improvement project. The PDSA cycle is used as the basis for planning and directing performance improvement efforts. The cycle is broken into four stages, starting with plan. In the planning stage, you establish an objective, which includes what you are trying to accomplish and your project goals. In this stage, you also come up with interventions or change ideas to improve the process and hypothesize about the results. You will also create an implementation plan that details the tasks, responsible party, and timeline for completion of each task. To illustrate the PDSA cycle, I'll use a brief report published by Frank Witter and colleagues in the American Journal of Infection Control in 2014. In the plan phase of the quality improvement project, the researchers assembled a project team and decided to focus on improving their institution's cesarean section surgical site infection rate. In the do stage, you educate and train everyone affected by the intervention or change idea, and then you implement the intervention on a very small scale. You ideally want to start small so that you can further tweak and refine the intervention based on what you've learned and minimize unintended consequences. During this stage, you will also collect data on what went well and any unexpected observations. For the do stage of the project, the researchers modified the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommendations for surgical site infection reduction based on the current surgical and obstetrical literature and implemented the following changes. Switch to chlorhexidine for skin preparation, administration of prophylactic antibiotics at the time of cord clamping, use of transverse abdominal incisions, for all classes of obesity, and skin closure with subcuticular suture. 
These are just a few of the changes that the team implemented. During the study stage of the cycle, you want to analyze your observational and process data to assess the impact of the change and determine the level of success achieved compared to your project goal. You will summarize the lessons learned and determine the changes that need to be made in the future to continue to drive improvements. In the study stage, the research team studied the cesarean section surgical site infection rates quarterly and received the chart of each patient with a reported surgical site infection. They also reviewed the compliance of the recommended practices and continued to search the medical literature for methods to improve the identified gaps in their best practices. The institution's cesarean section surgical site infection rate declined from 7.77% in 2005 to 3.24% in 2012. In the last step, you will want to act on what you have learned by keeping the intervention in place tweaking the intervention and running through the PDSA cycle again, or abandoning the intervention completely and coming up with a new idea to evaluate. In the final phase of the project, the research team continued to look for opportunities to further reduce the infection rate. In 2011, the researchers discovered that the three to four minute preparation time with chlorhexidine was too long and not being followed for stack cases. The team decided to standardize the use of alcohol wipes, followed by the application of betadine-containing steri drapes for stack cases, which can be completed in only 10 seconds. As illustrated by the quality improvement example, the PDSA cycle is meant to be an iterative process that builds on what you have learned so that quality is continuously improved over time. In the planning stage of the PDSA cycle, there's a number of different tools that you can use to better understand the process before implementing any interventions. Process mapping is one of these tools that is widely used to visually describe the flow of work. Process maps increase understanding of a process for all members of a quality improvement team and aid in analyzing how a process can be improved. These are the main icons that are used in process mapping. A rounded rectangle symbolizes the beginning or ending of a process. The regular rectangle symbolizes tasks within a process, and the diamond shape represents decision points that result in different processes. All steps are connected with arrows. Here is an example of what a simple process map would look like. There is a starting point, two tasks, and then a decision needs to be made. If the answer to the decision is yes, proceed to task three and complete the process. But if the answer is no, you go back to task two and repeat the decision process again until the answer to the decision is yes. This is the same simple process in a swim lane diagram. A swim lane diagram is a type of process map that uses the metaphor of lanes in a pool to delineate who does what in a process. The diagram is useful for clarifying complex processes, helping all parties understand what exactly is taking place, identifying unnecessary or disordered steps in a process, mapping out proposed changes, and developing and communicating an ideal future state process. Now, let's take a look at a simple example of a restaurant's process. The process starts by entering a restaurant, giving the customers menus, reviewing the menu, and then we get to the decision point, ready to order. If the customer is ready to order, the order will be taken, given to the chef, prepared, delivered, and the process ends with the customer eating the meal. This slide shows the same process with the same process steps put into a swim lane diagram. Each process step is separated into the customer, server, or chef's lane, 
depending on who is responsible for completing that process step. You can quickly see who performs each activity, and you can even add the average time it takes to complete each task to the process map to further describe the process. Process maps and swim lane diagrams can also be used as a starting point to brainstorm ideas to improve processes. Quality improvement teams will often look at the swim lane diagram together and add post-it notes to where they think the process can be improved. In this restaurant example, the brainstorming team has added post-it notes to eliminate the role of the server. In the new process, customers can pick up their own menus, select their meal on a paper menu, hand their order directly to a chef in the kitchen, and the order can be prepared right away. You can also use post-it notes to further document factors that contribute to poor outcomes like we will be doing in the postpartum hemorrhage scenario and activity. Now, it's your turn to apply what you have learned in this presentation. Your group will be tasked with creating a swim lane diagram from a postpartum hemorrhage video and identify factors that contributed to the error that occurred. Hopefully, you will be able to propose sustainable solutions to prevent this error from reoccurring. Remember to focus on changing the processes and not the people, and good luck.